Hello, and welcome to the fencing world. Now, before all you do-it-yourself types start pulling out your pen and paper thinking that this is a show about how to build a perfect white picket fences, you've come to the wrong place because this is a show about fencing, not fences. Now, <laughs> my name is Yaeli Laura, and I joined fencing because I thought it was a unique sport, and it's one of the only sports that doesn't require you to run after balls. <laughs> Uh, today with me, uh, I have my coach, Randy Brazil. Thank you for having me. You're well, welcome, but <laughs> thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about the origins of fencing? Well, as far back as I can remember, fencing started in uh, the 12th century, I would say. Um, but the modern fencing that we see now probably started in around 17th century, 18th century. Fencing is uh, one of the first Olympic sports. Uh, it was one of the first sports uh, debuted at the uh, Athens Games in 1796. Uh, I believe it was just foil and epée. They did not do saber, but you know, don't quote me. Maybe, maybe that, I could be wrong on that one. But uh, that, and if you talk to uh, Italians, Italians say they started fencing. If you talk to uh, uh, the French, the French say they started fencing. Uh, uh, and if you talk to the Spanish, the Spanish said they, they started fencing, but fencing, actually the origin of fencing is pretty much unknown, it's very ambig ambiguous. So when did you start fencing and how did, and how did you get into it? Well, uh, it, it's, a, it's a funny story. Um, at Hunter College, uh, um, I was working and uh, going, going to school full time. And I had to, I was going to work, going back to school, going to work, going back to school. So I needed to set my schedule. So I was sitting in the cafeteria one day with a friend of mine and this, another kid came up, he had this big bag. And uh, I asked him what the bag was. He said it was a fencing bag. And, and, I didn't, he, and he told me that Hunter has a, a, a fencing team. So, um, and I knew that if I could be on a sport, um, I could get to register early for classes so I can set my schedule. So um, the, the, the advantage of uh, setting my schedule was the thing that actually got me into fencing. And as soon as I started, as soon as my first day of practice, I just fell in, fell in love with the sport. And I've been involved with it ever since. So how did you go from practicing the sport to coaching it? Uh, it was a very seamless transition. Even when I was practicing the sport, I was still teaching. You know, even the little bit that I knew, I wanted to give to other people. So as I got better, my team got better. So I, I felt like, you know, it was up to me to get everyone better. And that's how I just started. My, my coach at the time, Tiberio Sala, saw how much I was committed to the sport, saw how much I could help other uh, fencers. So he, he, he allowed me to be assistant coach. Okay, I didn't know that about you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, according to research, fencing, well, the top three sports in the United States is football, baseball, and basketball. So fencing is not on the top five, it's not on the top 10. So why would anybody really want to join fencing in your it's, opinion? It's, it's probably not even on the top 20. <laughs> but um, I think the people, the people who don't consider uh, fencing like an exciting sport really haven't talked to me about fencing. Fencing is the ultimate test of physical ability and mental ability. Um, it's very similar to tennis where you, know, you have to take advantage of opportunity uh, you have to be patient, you know, you have to be smart because the, the chess game that's involved in fencing is, is, is very sophisticated, you know, so like uh, to be able to, be able to uh, fence efficiently and, 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 and fence seamlessly takes a long time, you know, so uh, I think the, the unpopular aspect of the, for, of the sport is the commitment that you have to do, you know, because you start fencing at a young age and after probably like 10 years of uh, fencing, that's when you'll see like really good results. So that means that fencing can be played by like young people, old people, yeah. like yeah. any, you what can are the start, ages? You, you, can start, you can start fencing at around six years old. I've seen, uh, I've, I've actually coached kids so for six years old um, to as much as, you know, where there's people at clubs that's uh, 60 still fencing. You know, so fencing is a wide, it's a wide range. You can start young, you can continue to fence till you really old. So earlier you were talking about uh, foil FA saber. For those who like don't know those terms, could you explain them? In, like, so fencing? Uh, fencing is uh, actually three sports. I mean, three weapons, foil, epee, saber. 
and foil is the original sport. Foil, uh, foil, fencing started in foil, and then um, actually, I, I, I'll tell you, on a collegiate level, fencing started in college uh, for all, all weapons on the men's side. Uh, saber foil epi started on the men's side in 1941. Um, saber is the weapon you see on TV. That's basically the slashing weapon. Uh, foil and epi are the poking weapon sort of, you know, so um, they have a button at the end and that's how you like register points. Uh, and um, the women actually didn't start fencing in college until I think foil was in 1982. That's when um, uh, collegiate women uh, fencing started and then followed in I believe 1995 was epe. So uh, and then in 2000 was my uh, first year fencing. That's when they started women's saber. Okay, so can you explain the, a little bit about the equipment and what's the difference between, okay. if there's any difference between men and women's equipment? There, there's no difference between men's and women. I think the only difference is that women have one extra uh, layer of protection, it's called the chest protector. But pretty much everything else is the same. Um, uh, for saber, you need, uh, everything above the waist is a point. So that's how you register points. So in saber, uh, it's a much faster weapon than the other two weapons. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little biased. I'm a receiver <laughs> myself, you know. So, um, uh, and foil is just the chest area, and then epe is more like is more like real fighting, real sword fighting, because uh, epe really has no rules. Uh, the uh, saber and foil have right of way rules, so that you have to have the right to get the touch. And epe, all you got to do is hit without being hit, and that's the way you get the touch. Um, and then uh, for saber, uh, there's uh, you wear a mask. Uh, it's all metal, and you have a, a head cord connected to your lame, which registers the point on your body. And then you have a glove, mm -hmm. and then the glove uh, is up to your wrist. For uh, foil, um, it's just the chest, and um, and also a part of the bib. And then epi is all over, from head to toe, you can register a touch. So what like other equipment would go into, like, you could check, you were a lame? You were, you were, you were a lame. And um, under and all that. Oh, so so yeah. uh, look, for, for the protection you have, uh, there's, other, there's other parts of the, uh, your uniform that you don't see. Mm -hmm. um, you have a uh, underarm protector underneath your jacket. Um, you have first, first you have your lame, you have your jacket, you have your underarm protector, um, you have a glove, you have knickers. Knickers are pants, but uh, uh, um, but they're, they're, for fencing they're called knickers. And then you have your socks, and you have to pull your socks all the way up to your knees because no, really, essentially no skin can be sewn in fencing. Okay, yeah, makes sense. So, um, is there a proper way to use the equipment or like hold the sabers and well, hold the weapons? Well, when fencing first started, there was pretty much only one type of grip. It was called mm -hmm. the French grip, which is the long grip. Um, and then now they have various types of grip. You have a pistol grip. So the pistol grip is how you hold the weapon. So it's sort of like holding a gun. So that's why it's called the pistol grip. There's a modified French grip, there's a Belgian grip, there's a Russian grip. So mm -hmm. it depends on the style of fencing that you're learning. Mm -hmm. So can, I think you kind of already explained a little bit, mm -hmm. but can you at least, so let's stick to like one weapon, maybe foil because it's mm -hmm. the beginner's weapon. Mm -hmm. Can you explain like the, how do you win? How do you get, like the rules, how do you get points okay. and stuff? So uh, in foil, there's a right of way. You have to have the right to get the touch. And that right is, 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 is determined by the director. So in, in right of way, essentially, well, for uh, the layman, you want to be moving forward. You know, so the person that's moving forward, is, it, it has the right to get the touch. Unless the, unless the defender does something to take that right from them. So you can, take a, you can take it with a parry, you can take it with a beat, you can take it with several rules that uh, involve fencing that can take the right from that person and bring it to you. So how, does, how do like, the points get registered and like, when do you win? When does it stop? Okay, so it depends on the tournament. So um, usually it's five touch bouts. So What's touches about? mean 
Bout <laughs> is a mat. <laughs> and okay. it's five it's five touch uh, five touch bouts uh, and it's the first to five. It's the first to five. So you have three minutes to get five touches. And if you don't get five touches in three minutes, you get one overtime minute. And if, if there's no, in, in an overtime minute, there's a, a director that does, probably does a coin flip if they have a coin. They, they, they do something to determine who has the right of way at the end of, at the, in that overtime period. Um, for, that's pretty much it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so for five, no, no, but like later, that, that's at the beginning. So um, later on uh, in, in, in other tournaments, you can have 15 touch bouts. So basically you have pools of five. So if you say you have 30 fences fencing, you have six pools of five or five pools of six. And it'll take like the top, the top, let's say top four fences, and they will, do, they will fence in a direct elimination. And that direct elimination will be 15 touches. So whoever, and they'll just, Keep keep going to the last person. Okay, so in general, what's the basic way to train for fencing? Well, the basic way to train, the best way to train okay. for fencing is to have a coach. Um, it requires a lot of it requires a lot of patience, um, but you definitely need uh, to train at a at a club, and you need a and you need a coach because the movements in fencing is not normal movements. It's not something that you would normally do, the way you advance. So. Advance or retreat. Advance and retreating is how we move in fencing. So the way you advance and the way you retreat, you know, uh, is not something that you normally do. So someone has to train your body to do something like that. Okay. So before we finish, and I'm sure everyone would like to see some basic moves, but can you just really answer? Where would someone go if they wanted to start fencing? Well, I mean, being in New York City has the best advantages in terms of fencing. They are the best clubs here. You have um, Manhattan Fencing Center, you have the Fencers Club, you have um, the New York Athletic Club, uh, Brooklyn Fencing. These are all top, uh, probably some of the top clubs in the country. So in New York, um, in general, just everybody comes here to fence. This is where you want to train because if you want to be an elite athlete, you have to train with elite athletes. That's been our show. Thank you for joining us mm. and thank you for giving us all this information about fencing. I'm sure everyone would like to see some moves now. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>